Welcome to Power Charting. I'm your host, Bruce Frazier, and we are about to embark on the chart reading, the Wyckoff Way Workshop Part 3 NVIDIA Case Study. And thank you for attending Parts 1 and 2. If you have not attended those uh, first two sessions, were, which were exceptional, go to the Power Charting YouTube page to watch them on demand at your convenience. This was recorded on August 17th. Original broadcast is on September 8th. And uh, so uh, again, thank you for being here. And a big, big thank you to Roman Bogomazov for taking the time to walk us through this incredible uh, chart reading methodology. And uh, Roman is simply a master one of the very, very best at this uh, incredible topic. And he's an educator in a minute. I'm going to tell you how you can learn more about this methodology if you enjoy these workshops by attending Ramon's class. And with this uh, quick announcement, TSASF Annual Conference 2023 is going to be on September 16th in San Francisco. We would love for you to attend. If you're going to be in the Bay Area, attend live, and uh, you'll be able to um, meet with, talk to, hear these great speakers who are going to present all day on Saturday. Continental breakfast and lunch will be served, a very nominal fee to attend, and we would love to have you there. If you cannot attend live, it's very easy to participate in this conference in a virtual format, and that is to become a member of the TSASF.org. And uh, it's very simple to become a member, and we would love to have you in this very uh, storied and historic organization. So please uh, consider that. You simply go to the TSASF.org website to uh, register for membership and you, achieve, you, through that membership, will be able to watch this conference included in your membership fee. So very nominal charge to attend uh, on a virtual format, and recordings will be available a few days thereafter. So see you there. And then uh, Roman has uh, embarked on the Wyckoff Trading Course Fall Semester Part 1 uh, program, it's a 15-week rigorous advanced technical analysis program in the Wyckoff method, which is modeled after the great course that we started back, gosh, over 30 years ago with Dr. Hank Pruden in San Francisco at Golden Gate University. Roman has raised it to an even higher level. He's a wonderful educator, and you will uh, have an in-depth exposure to the Wyckoff method in this part one of this program, two and a half hours each week, 15 weeks. And the first two programs are already in the can for this fall, but that is uh, uh, okay because you can watch them on demand. Watch episode one absolutely free of charge by clicking on this green arrow, and you'll be able to uh, see what it's all about in class number one, uh, join the class, pick it up with number three, and each episode is recorded. Just watch episode or class two on demand, and you are on your way, and you will, I think, find this whole experience of education, the, the Wyckoff way to be uh, uh, exceptionally valuable to you in your technical analysis pursuits. And with that, Without further ado, let's move on to Wyckoff chart reading, the NVIDIA case study part three, and uh, we'll see you uh, in future weeks with back with our regular programming at Power Charting. We are continuing with our series on chart reading the Wyckoff way. NVIDIA is our case study part three. So be sure to go back through the prior episodes to uh, see our discussion on NVIDIA as it progresses. It's a wonderful case study. And we have with us today here, very special guest, Roman Bogomazov. Roman, thank you so much for being here. Always to be happy here. 
really uh it's been so much fun to do this i'm having a blast and uh we really want you to get into the the joy the gestalt of reading charts in the wyckoff methodology so uh we're really sort of going down the rabbit hole of uh chart reading here but part of it is is that you could continue to do this with roman's wtc course and roman uh just briefly tell us about what you're going to talk about this uh, coming semester well, by this time, we should have done the complimentary um, session on August 28th, uh, and you could just watch the replay of that on our Wyke of uh, Trading Method YouTube channel. Uh, so find us on YouTube, and you'll uh, you'll see that uh, session. And uh, you know, uh, just go through the session. Um, start concentrating on the homework. The homework is going to be uh, Jim Forte's Anatomy of the Trade, which I consider probably to be the best article written uh, on the price structural analysis um, uh, in Wyckoff method. Um, and, uh, you know, start working with us. You know, uh, come to the class uh, and we'll go uh, through the whole semester, 15 sessions. Uh, we'll be studying... Uh, a lot of different subjects, um, but primarily and then the, the price structural analysis um, on the changes of character, changes of environment, like of events, like of phases. Then we're going to concentrate on the uh, effort versus result behind which we will be uh, looking and analyzing volume and price signatures, comparing bar to, to bars and swings to swings, and uh, uh, we'll use the historical analogs to decipher uh, what is the dominant force currently um, uh, on the chart uh, and for the price. Then we'll talk about the selection characteristics. Um, if, if you're a stock trader or a crypto trader or a futures trader, it doesn't really matter. You still have to follow the methodology behind this uh, the proper selection. And then we'll talk about tactics including trade management how do we where do we open the position where do we place the original stop loss how do we move it uh, where do we add where do we trim where do we exit what is the size appropriate at different places and spots all of that is being discussed uh, in all of those 15 sessions and as always you know just being a part of the community uh, is very important for us because trading could be a very long lonely endeavor here you could study you could build the skill and also be a part of the community Bruce? It's a uh, it's a college course. It's a very rigorous 15 week program, very uh, consistent with what we used to teach at Golden Gate University. And uh, Roman is an exceptional instructor, probably the best teacher of the Wyckoff methodology out there today. And it's an absolute screaming value compared to the cost of going to a college class. And so uh, this is just wonderful. And, you know, you fall in love with this material, which you will, that's a warning because it's absolutely addictive, is then there's part two. And you can continue on with your mastery path in chart reading. Ramon? Great. Thank you so much, Bruce. All right. Well, now to our case study. And before we go into the continuation of the low of COVID here in March of 2020, Bruce, do you want to give a couple of words um, to the structure uh, to the left, uh, yeah. you know, their accumulation and the subsequent markup? There's a law in Wyckoff, cause and effect. And all the laws are at work here, but the a cause is a, a building of, of a story, as Ramon said, where we're talking about the uh, the motives of the composite operator as they accumulate shares, which they do in a very, very careful manner, which actually uh, encourages weak holders of the stock to give up their stock in the accumulation structure. So the cause is the accumulation structure as Ramon is drawing it here. And we actually in Wyckoff break down the phases uh, of accumulation into 
these uh, areas A, B, C, D, and E, and we learn how to identify the attributes or characteristics of the, each of these phases, which present in the form of an effect, and the effect is an uptrend. And in this case, you can see that this is a glorious uptrend and very important because NVIDIA is becomes an absolute leadership stock we talked about this last week. It shows up in the relative strength characteristics of this stock. And note how the relative strength goes into a confirmed uptrend right as the accumulation, the cause is being completed, and the effect, which is the uptrend, is beginning. And so look at this beautiful uptrending action into February, March of 2020 with a climactic surge, which precedes the uh, intense COVID decline. But note in the COVID decline, how the relative strength continues to show strength, which is like x-ray vision, I think. And Richard D. Wyckoff was very much of a relative strength analyst. He didn't have the tools of uh, relative strength that we have today, but he very much followed the relative strength of the stocks that he was campaigning and only campaigned leadership. NVIDIA is demonstrating leadership in the COVID decline. And these are the kinds of stocks, the profile of stocks that we want to identify and put on our trading list, our campaign list, however we're trading the market, and so that brings us up to where we are right now, I think, Ramon. All right. Sounds great. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit about the second part uh, of the effect, uh, the second uptrend that we have here off the COVID low. Uh, first of all, the same type of structure and the character as to the first one. So we have number one, number two. Um, we're looking at the first leg uh, which is going to be all about the momentum. There is some bind behind this. And here it's very interesting. Even though COVID decline was tremendously, you know, tremendous disaster in terms of how the equity was so quickly gone. Um, for uh, NVIDIA, uh, we are actually not extending uh, this decline as much as in other stocks and therefore relative strength, as Bruce has said. Uh, but we're seeing here that all of this volume signature around this area is suggestive of not just institutional presence, but also institutional buy. How do we know that? Well, because after the decline, what happens as the result of this volume coming in and all of this buying? the upward result increases, right? So we are in the uptrend. So they were buying. We know that they were buying. This is this, the wake of story at this spot here. So we could say that this was indeed a second accumulation that taken place after the initial accumulation, first accumulation in this area right here. And that's how it happens. It happens as a stepping stone a type of process where on on uh, on the top of the previous uh, trading range, we're building another area of accumulation. Now this is a typical accumulation, right? Because it's so unusual. It's a V bottom accumulation, and that's why it's so unusually looking. But from the volume signature, we conclude that this area was the area of heavy buying. It was an opportunistic opportunity for for them to be there and then again coming back to the same character of the uh uptrend we're seeing the first leg is the momentum leg we're seeing the second leg as the vertical absorption leg with a lot of profit taking on smaller reactions and quick small absorptions and then climactic speculative run into the end uh and uh it seems to us that this is uh healthy behavior when fractally price structure repeats itself it just tells you that the behavior is stable and it's kind of the same having said this there are nuances here and as you could start seeing when you look at the second uh run we're seeing that maybe the extension is not that much maybe 
Um, the last climactic run is not that pronounced. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of the deterioration of the momentum. It's very subtle. Uh, so I'm just judging it by my eye. So what could the deduction be here as to what's to come? We're probably going to say that hmm, maybe instead of like a low duration and quick recovery uh, behind the absorption, the next level of absorption, so let's say absorption number three, is going to take a shape of a trading range and the duration of that trading range is going to increase because we will have to absorb more supply after the, the decrease of the participation by the demand. And with that, let's go and see what happens. And we do go into a trading range. And Bruce, this is a beauty uh, for a couple of reasons. But the first one for me is just such a beautiful reaccumulation trading range. It's a beautiful case study, absolutely worth spending some time on. Also, go back to my written blogs at Stock Charts and read about reaccumulations. They're uh, sprinkled through the uh, archives of the Wyckoff uh, Power Charting uh, blog series. And uh, look at these reaccumulations because there's a characteristic to the way that they unfold. And notice this is a vastly different from the uh, reaccumulation or the V bottom structure that occurred on the COVID decline. Now, anytime you get a climactic surge and then you get an automatic reaction, in this case, you can see that in August, September, that there's a climactic surge with a very sharp decline. And that decline is greater than the, the declines that precede it in the uptrend. That Those two conditions, tell you that this is becoming likely a range bound market, which is gonna result in one of two things. It's either going to be distribution and for a decline or reaccumulation for another advance. I always defer to the idea of reaccumulation, especially with a strong leadership stock like Nvidia was at that time. And so we draw, as Roman just did, a resistance line on buying climax and a support line on automatic reaction with the understanding that prices should remain uh, bounded by these two zones, these resistance and support. And this becomes a way for us to one gauge whether it is in fact reaccumulation or distribution and two, identify the spots where we would want to either add to existing positions or initiate new positions. And keeping in mind that all of this is a cause building process. And in this case, reaccumulation for a move up. And the there are characteristics that we can see, especially we as we get towards the later end of reaccumulation that tell us that this is in fact accumulation. It's for a um, another leg up or another rally phase. Ramon? Mm -hmm. um, reaccumulations are uh, just a pause in the uptrend. And um, I always think of reaccumulation uh, as an opportunity, a time opportunity, like a period of opportunity for the public and institutions to catch up with the new realities of how the company is valued at this point of the uptrend. Sometimes, you know, the price just runs away too fast. And then, uh, you know, the valuation is just like overshoots, goes into the overbought condition. So it just requires some time to... Uh, for, these, the, uh, for the market participants to fully accept the new uh, higher prices. And with that, as we enter a reaccumulation trading range, as Bruce has described here um, at the beginning in phase A, which again is just a stop in action, what we want to see is an idea of a continuation, is that the uptrend will pause but will continue and therefore this is a reaccumulation trading range so we are seeking the evidence on the chart and we are trying to read through the price volume action the uh, confirmation of that idea the first confirmation comes 
obviously was the uptrend itself. It was, you know, pretty extensive. And now we will be comparing, let's say, the initial reaction, not only to all of the reactions, but also as a retracement to that uptrend. And it's very insignificant. The change of behavior uh, that suggests uh, a change of environment from an uptrend into a trading range is very small. Only three days down. Yes, supply is increasing, but at the same time, there is some demand, hidden demand behind that volume signature. So on the uh, very short distance for the change of behavior with some presence of demand as well, this is a confirmation that the profit taken is taking place right now. Uh, some of the value investors are selling. They could be selling this also to other institutions. Please note how the volume signature in phase A and early phase B is the largest throughout the whole formation. Why is that? because this is the area of institutional exchange. This is not the area of the exchange between institutions and general public. It is more between the uh, two types of institutions and that's why the volume signature is so high. And with that, we established the boundaries for the trading range. My preference is to have the alternative label and I usually would place here some kind of definition of a stop in action, either a selling climax or a shakeout. And then from there, I would start my label and I would say like, this is a minor um, uh, automatic rally. This is a major automatic rally. And then here is a secondary test. Here is a secondary test. It's up to you where you want to put phase A. In my opinion, labeling is overrated. And that's probably, you know, one of the things that I should just put on the t-shirt. And uh, especially in phase A, I really don't care how you would label this because your trading decisions are going to come to the right and not to the left. But with that, we're seeing how on the second secondary test, the volume signature goes down significantly and it shows diminishing selling. So the story of phase A or extended phase A goes like this the value investors are starting to take profits and they sell into the strength of the uptrend, which stops the uptrend. And then their selling creates the change of behavior and suggests some kind of duration of uh, consolidating price actions. During this area, there is an exchange, institutional exchange of shares. And then after that, they do nothing. They go into the period of inactivity, which leads to the reaction on the diminished volume signature, it's suggestive that the selling is done. At the higher low of that reaction, that still confirms the idea of the reaccumulation. And then we go into a very interesting phase B. Bruce? The whole purpose of a reaccumulation is to discourage people that are in the stock. So the trader types which have identified this stock are the momentum traders uh, become discouraged when they get a big uh, automatic reaction after a buying climax. And so they are among the first to exit the stock. And the other thing about traders is, is that they find trading ranges to be absolutely tortuous. They, they, they're painful. They don't want to be in stocks that are not in a momentum uh, signature at a point in time. The other group that becomes discouraged is the institutional class. The institutional class will start to be discouraged with this stock when you see the relative strength start to top out and become weak, which happens around February, March uh, in the uh, uh, this period over to the right towards the end. Very common for reaccumulations to have deteriorating relative strength at the uh, later stages, the last third of the trading range. And that discourages institutions and keeps them away from the stock, which allows the CO to continue to accumulate shares. And so I just want to make those very important points. This reaccumulation is classic in that regard because it discourages first the traders, then it discourages certain institutional investors and allows the CEOs to uh, build 
further position in their campaign of the stock to ever higher prices. Roman. All right. Well, um, let's look at phase B, C, and phase D. All right. So this is B, C, and then D. Um, the phase B, I usually would look at that phase as kind of like two phases, uh, two halves. Uh, usually the first half is going to be more volatile uh, because the sentiment is still such that a lot of people are in the are in the bullish camp, a lot of people are in the bearish camp, and that produces just natural trading. Also, we are not that far away from phase A, where there was a lot of trading. So just like this participation still has a slowing down momentum. So you are going to have some volatility there. And with that, the volume signature might increase. You might have some volume spikes. You know, you might have some volatile ups and downs and so on and so forth. The second uh, phase also could be of lower volatility, number one, and then also retest into phase C, low, right? So we kind of see a lot of testing in phase B. So that's lowering of the volatility. And at the same time, we see this decline as a test uh, into the phase C low. So with that, phase B uh, functionality is just basically um, make sure that the trading activity goes down. There is some kind of exhaustion by buyers and sellers that discourages participation altogether. Yeah, discouragement that, is the right word for phase B. It just mm -hmm. everybody's discouraged. Institutions yeah. aren't interested. Traders aren't interested, it's, and people that are in the stock just become impatient, discouraged, and uh, and they are easily swayed to one side or another. Yes. And that's why into the end of phase B, beginning of phase C, you're going to see all of those up thrust actions, and then. Uh, it goes to the opposite extreme and creates a spring where the price temporarily commits below the support level. Yes, there is some increase in selling. Why does this happen? Well, because weak hands are so emotionally tied through, let's say, phase B inactivity of, of testing that they just give up. And this... Um, Given up creates some selling, uh, increases supply. And with that, uh, CO comes in and picks up more shares in the uh, area of the value. So the phase C usually and typically would be the second or the third place where they would consider buying. And with that, we see that uh, after the sprint, the easiest way to think about the correct sprint is we want to see almost immediate recovery back above the support into the trading range with some subsequent testing on the lower volume signature and lower spread and with the local breakout as the confirmation that the spring was successful and hopefully continuation of the rally to the new higher grounds into the higher highs because that consistently tells us that there is enough strength behind the buying to produce and increase the upward result. And then, Bruce, I know that one of your favorite topics to talk about is the last point of supports and the backup action. So here we're seeing, how would you label this, a backup or a last point of support? And yeah, how would you describe often you, that? Often you'll use both labeling uh, conventions at the same time with that kind of a setup. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's exactly the way I would do it. And I would say that the other thing that is so compelling about this spring and what you ex expect to see is note how that whole structure March up to mid April takes uh, Nvidia from below the September lows up to and through the highs of the structure in a two stage advance, which is a complete change of the characteristics of the way the stock is trading. It's a huge, huge sign that uh, the stock is uh, tired of going down. The supply that was available from September to March, April is absorbed, and now it's getting ready to resume its uptrend. And so to have this pullback 
The thing that stands out to me about the pullback is note, Ramon, how the April to May decline is it takes quite a period of time, about uh, five weeks, and it's much less severe than the February March decline. And so uh, the that in and of itself, comparing the, those reactions, tells us that absorption has taken place, and the uh, pullback can can't even get back to the midpoint of the trading range, and the volume is low. And that often is what you see is the at the conclusion of the pullback is you see a diminishment of volume, which is a telltale sign that the stock has been well absorbed, is in strong hands, and is ready to start going up in earnest. All right. Well, Bruce, that was so well said. I think that's that's it for this case study. A beautiful case study. And Ramon, thank you. Uh, this is really going deeply into this, but this is the way that you uh, learn how to really be a masterful chart reader. And there's just no better approach than the Wyckoff method. And strongly encouraged, encourage you to check out Ramon's uh, wonderful WTC class. Ramon, last thoughts and, and thank you. Thank you, Bruce. And uh, we are looking forward to working with you guys. So uh, come to our classes and be a part of our community. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Roman. Take care, everyone. See you next time.